you know, one of the things I talk a lot about in business is how the experience of being in a participatory mode for customers mm -hmm. is transformative. It changes mm -hmm. their expectations about what they're going to get, how they're going to engage and relate to the businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think a similar analogy I would draw in terms of politics, where these people are getting empowered in campaigns, how does that transfer into governance or do you see it mm -hmm. kind of moving and transcending the campaign mode to actually now we're going to govern in some more open and transparent way and with community and social networking and all that. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a great question and I think it's something that um, you know, we're, we're just starting to, you know, both as us as, as a company, but also as a country, we're just starting to explore the possibilities of that. Um, you know, and it, and it comes in a, it, it, it's going to come in a lot of forms. I mean, one, one, of, one of the most basic things that makes the internet work, and particularly when you look at sort of the, the Web 2.0 movement that makes this possible, is the openness and the idea that the, the things that you're creating, whether it's, you know, a map, whether it's a you know, tool for you know, letting people know what you're doing, where you are, all of these things, they have to be able to interact with each other. And that means that you've got to make data available. You've got to be able to publish an RSS feed. You've got to have an API. You've got to have ways for people to take this data and do interesting things with them. So, so one of the first, I think, applications of some of this technology that, that we're using now on the web in governance is simply going to be making it easier for people to know what their government is doing mm -hmm. and to consider information about it you know whether it's I mean we recently passed a bill that was a you know, earmark uh, legislation that, that creates a public database of earmarks that are you know being issued by Congress but part of the goal of this wasn't just to have it out there for the sake of saying oh it's public but to actually make it consumable to actually make it possible mm -hmm. to go in and you know pull out the specific uh, you know the specific details of each plan to put that in the database so that people can download that they can search mm. it they can do mashups with that oh, yeah. know, making this information giving giving people the the data in a way that's that's usable I mean I was I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who works for uh, the Sunlight Foundation which is an organization mm -hmm. that tries to increase governmental transparency and he's talking about the way that you get data on lobbyists and it's the way that they handle their filings it's you know there's no standard data format in some cases the reports the only thing that's available are scanned copies of handwritten documents you know there's none of this ability for that data to be easily consumed and put mm. to use that's one of the first things that I think we're, we're going to be able to do and there's a lot of interest you know once you know if, if we can get the government to to start doing more of that in any data that it publishes right. I think you'll see the creativity of the online community unleashed on I'm that already data. seeing a Google mash, <laughs> Maps mashup where you can see the earmarks the person the coloring and size of like how much are people going for and exactly, where exactly exactly mm -hmm. and I think beyond that you know what, what we want to do is to make it possible for and we do this for a lot of our clients that are that are issue focused where we want to make it easier for them to get their membership to lobby their legislators lobby their congress their members of congress make intelligent use of you know the the, the whatever database of people they have how do you focus their energy and in some cases it's as simple as you know writing a letter writing a letter to a newspaper writing a letter to you know your your member of congress but it's also perhaps getting people together in their communities to talk about specific issues. You know, if you're talking about environmental, if you're an environmental organization, you actually want people to be, part of your mission is going to be educating people. And then channeling that and the, 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 the sort of the empowerment that comes from that education towards affecting how government works. Mm -hmm. it's, hard, it's hard to know. You know, there's, there's the possibility of government actually being, taking... Um, reaching out to people and, and sort of encouraging people to soliciting comment not just in public meetings or you know via a web forum but actually giving people tools to you know ha to have their own public comment meetings in a community right. to have you know their own sort of uh, uh, you know sessions where they brainstorm on what's the right way to deal with this kind of regulation or what do we think about mm -hmm. you know whether you're talking about you know uh, rules governing cell phone tower placement or you're talking about you know a passenger's bill of rights right airlines you know getting people to, to, to pool their collective brain power yeah. you know right now I think I think there's a lot we can do with that and yeah. so we're gonna start to see more of that both coming from government but also organizations that are trying to change what government does to influence it that are gonna tap into this uh, you know this 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 collective brain power on the net and and put that to good mm -hmm. use I had a great conversation with someone in government recently where he was saying you know Oddly enough, we've had this paternalistic model mm -hmm. in government where we're taking care of things for you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it, with internet-enabled technologies, we can now kind of move to a, truly a more democratic model or yep. a participatory model, even down to our departments of public works where people are actually identifying potholes for us, yeah, yeah. even down to simple stuff like that in terms of government. Which, which is fantastic. And I mean, there, there's, a, uh, there's a group in the UK called My Society that has done all these wonderful experiments trying to bring public comment into the operations of government. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, one of my favorite tools that they have is simply a way for people to, it's sort of like dig for public works, mm. where you can go, you can say, here's a problem in this neighborhood. It's a pothole, it's graffiti, it's, you know, the street lights have been broken, it's, you know, kids are hanging out and, you know, menacing yeah. the, uh, the elderly <laughs> yeah. neighbors, and people can go and vote, and they can say, this is what's most important to me. What the site then does is, after things reach a certain threshold, is it takes those votes, and it takes the, the neighbors' complaints and the information that they provided, and it sends it to the you know the the, the the person in government who's responsible for that area and says right. hey not only do you got a problem but the neighbors know about it they know we've contacted you about right, right. it so you know that's you're going to be held accountable, accountable if you don't respond you know just Fantastic. simple stuff of using using online tools to just aggregate the you know the the, the collective uh, you know sort of knowledge and and, mm -hmm. and cares of people and channel that efficiently towards right. actual action by the government and we're seeing tremendous those types potential of tools. it's still yeah. I think we're still in the very earliest stages of this but there, there is huge potential there and I think that there's an interest there there's there's certainly a lot of people who are who are starting to think about this and and it's ultimately you know to, to make a plug for the Democratic Party and you know, a lot of what, what what the party is trying to do is to figure out how to make government work better mm -hmm. and you know to serve people better to be more efficient and this is a this is one of the ways that I think we're gonna see uh, you know the party actually uh, you know in power six doing that We've covered a lot of ground from all over Manhattan <laughs> by talking about different different parts of the campaign. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much. Thanks it's a, a wonderful conversation. I really, right. really appreciate it.